Hello everybody and welcome to Cause and Effect, a show about Vietas. Uh, we were planning to talk about the Swedish National Championship today, but uh, concerning we have talked a lot about championships and tournaments uh, the last few episodes of this season, we decided to skip it and maybe take that further on ahead the road. Uh, so, but we got a we got a question from a viewer, Yuan Louis Ong. I don't know if I uh, pronounced that correctly. But anyway, and uh, he wants us to talk about the Black Hand. So we are going to talk about the Black Hand today. Uh, in the first part here, we are going to talk a little bit about the sect in general. And uh, in the second part, we are going to show a few examples of decks that have proven to work well featuring Black Hand tech. But first, as always, let me introduce the two Sancha Passos to my Don Quixote. Uh, Adam Esbjörnsson and Isak Esbjörnsson Bjärnmark. Say hello. 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 So, uh, first... That was well, wicked synced. We are the voice of reason in this? Yes, okay. of course. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> A lot of time preparing for this show was actually uh, googling the uh, spelling of Don Quixote in Shanson and Panzer. So, <laughs> <laughs> but A lot so that you can pronounce it correctly? Or yeah. Okay. But Anywho... <laughs> Yeah, before we dive into the black pool that is the black hand, let's talk a little bit about how our Vietas weeks have been. Adam, how was your Vietas week? Uh, well, uh, I've um, I recently deconstructed most of my decks, and for the Swedish Nationals, I reconstructed most of my decks. So now I've been playing some of my older decks, or older, older, from a few months ago. I did it last Wednesday. And uh, they're holding together, of course. So I managed to win, which I haven't been doing since I deconstructed the decks. So, okay. uh, yeah. So you've been winning, but uh, but uh, you didn't do so well on the nationals, though. No, I did not. Uh, even though I played one of my older decks, which has been tried and true. I played Emu deck, and uh, I was um, cross table ousted, one might say, or back ousted. Uh, because I played Imbutes. I yeah. presume a lot of Imbute players have been in this situation before. It happened to me <laughs> three times in a row. So I didn't do so well. Now we can confess that the whole cause and effect team actually was quite embarrassingly poor. And <laughs> we what? didn't take any... Uh, me and we Adam could... didn't take any VPs. And uh, yeah. Isaac, you got... I, I was about to say that I performed the best and I had one point trying to save you. <laughs> Save your face, but yeah, we did really bad this year. Yeah, horrible. So, <laughs> how has your week been then, Isaac? Like? Uh, my week has been all work, no fun, no play. <laughs> but uh, but the nationals were awesome. It was it was great? It was a really nice experience as usual. Really, really tough games. Every single game, really tough for everybody involved. If I may remember correctly, there were only a f three people, something like that. Two, three people with more than one game win in the finals. So that's proof of a really, really tight competition. There were three players, one five, and that one five was the last spot in the finals. So overall, really tight tournament. And of course, we'd like to congratulate the winner. Lost his name right now. Uh, uh, Robert Doktorov, yeah, Swedish Robert, player. Yes. Uh, so he is uh, keeping the Swedish fly flag for us this yeah. year because the Finns have been winning twice, and this is the fourth year. So now we're tied at two two. Yeah. On the other hand, on our travels out to Oppicon last four years, we've had two wins out of four where we were visiting. So we're we're on equal grounds there with the Finns. Yeah, we're trading blows. We were down three one something. Yeah. Before this year, and this year we've uh, got even. Yeah, we got both Ropicon and the Swedish <laughs> Nationals. <laughs> Take that, Finns. Yes. Uh, uh, the another part which was even more awesome were the uh, uh, pre made draft set. I'm not going to go into specific details, but I will make an, an article on the weekend about the pre constructed draft set. But it was a really great experience. Yeah. I, had a, I had a blast playing a pre made draft. I know Anders had to leave early f 
for so and so so we couldn't participate but I don't I don't remember participating I don't know how you enjoyed it yeah it. I thought it was a lot better than a regular draft so not only is it is it the only way we can play draft after uh, printing and ceased but it's also better than regular draft so I see a big future for constructed drafting yeah well that's awesome uh, my week has been uh, really good uh, uh, I've got my fetched my cards from my brothers. So I've been uh, building some decks, and I've been uh, I've been playing some appearance on well, and it's, uh, it's gone great. I actually swept two tables. Just saying. Yeah, yeah, that's that's great. So this is the first time you actually been constructed constructing decks since like 2008. Since yeah, something like before that. Before you went to journalist school. Yeah. Yeah. So this is the first time I have my pictures in like four years. Pictures, your cards. Cards, pictures, whatever. <laughs> yeah, uh, cards, of course. So that's awesome, and I'm really feeling into the game right now. It's good. Yeah. Good. Uh, so, uh, <laughs> enough shit chat. Uh, so, we're going to talk about the, the Black Hand today. Yeah. Uh, do we have any initial thoughts, Isaac? On the Black Hand? Yeah. Uh, care to be a bit more specific? Yeah, um, I don't know, what's, what's the main... Black hand tech you like? Uh, it's basically the untapping, but overall, I'm not like a huge fan of the black hand. I've tried out some decks sometimes, but just for me, it ends up being just slightly uh, under under what I wanted to do. It's like slightly underachieving to be worth the effort of doing the trick. But it's good fun, you can get some really good decks, uh, especially on your Art of Memory, which is a unique card. Really unique, I'd say. Which is awesome. And I especially, I think it's great for people who like toolbox or toolboxy decks, which I time and again have stated that I don't really enjoy, but it's yeah. the card has a Unique and ingenious design to it, so that's why one of my favorites. Okay, Adam, do you have anything more initial to say about the subject? Uh, it's uh, it's just like a support thing. They they don't offer anything unique, so you can't do anything like uh, new with it per se. You just can do the regular stuff a bit different. It just supports a regular strategy. Okay, uh, so. It's it's like a more roundabout way to go about doing something that you normally do, uh, which can be fun, but oh. it's not always worth it, of course. That brings me. Uh, I'm sorry. Are you? Oh, I don't. Uh, that brings me into one of my uh, initial questions that I can just go fire away. With. Why go black hand? Hold on. Indeed. Why? <laughs> uh, no. It. Um, it it gives it the support is actually really powerful. Uh, untap multi act. Uh, for any set of disciplines, like, or in theory, any set of disciplines, any set of disciplines can get multi act, or uh, any set of disciplines can get uh, powerful recursion, or any set of discipline can get some bloat or crypt acceleration cards. So, uh, there's like a huge incentive to add backhand tech if your crypt support it, but your crypt becomes a lot worse, of course, because only some vampires are backhand. Or if you want to become Black Hand, that's a huge obstacle in itself. Exactly. Yeah. Becoming Black Hand, like, in-game when you turn up the map, I think that's never an option. No. I think that's... Like Cadet and uh, Into the or, or Blooding or Mustajib. It's so not worth it. Because of two things. Once, for once, the action isn't like worth it. You need to do something useful. Mm. So rather than taking an action to get a really weird trait that might help you somewhat, that's a huge uh, detour when it comes to actually gaining VPs. That's one thing. And the other thing being that uh, Reunion Kamut, which is one of the best cards mm. for Black Hand, actually requires your vampire to be Black Hand while in uncontrolled region. Mm. And then these getting to be black hand techs don't actually do anything useful. And so not even um, Cadet, which at yeah. first glance it might look like you can use Reunion Camut on someone who has a Cadet, but yeah. that's actually not possible 
so there's no way of uh, putting uh, Reunion Camet on a vampire who is not black hand. Isaac, in right. your opinion, what strategy do you think is most beneficial for including black hand tech? Like oh, no, now I'm silent because I need to think. So, and this is not good TV. We can all dance. <laughs> uh, probably stealth bleed. <laughs> what? Why would you say that? <laughs> but well, let, let him finish, Adam. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Because art of memory, if you use that with a deck stealth bleed, then you can easily balance. Uh, bleed between, uh, the balance between bleed and stealth by a art of memory. So you can recurse whatever you need uh, when you see what you're facing. Okay. You could probably uh, do some other stuff, but that's just the initial thing, like that's really strong. The untap is really great, but oh. Oh, yeah, the, the thing is, one can be like, in theory, if there were a crypt that were fit to use these cards, but that's like the biggest limiting factor is that you seldom get crypts that are good enough to make the best out of the weirder black hand tech. So uh, art of memory is really clean. It's easy to do. You can have two black hand vampires in play and two non black hand vampires in play, and there's no problem. But doing like the tattoo signal dons, you probably want the whole crypt to be black hand to get a reunion comet and stuff like that. So Adam? that's my reasoning. Yeah. Adam, you, you disagree? Uh, well, there's something that uh, Isaac kind of touched on, which is, I think is the most important thing, is that there are only a really limited amount of, uh, really limited crypts that are black hand and that have like, uh, that good, vampire, good enough vampires and have a good enough discipline spread together that they can work as a black hand deck. And this defines which strategies are good as black hand. Okay. The crypts that you actually find. And it, we will later on go through three, three of them. And I don't think, except for those three, I don't think there are that many crypts that are so good. So uh, uh, it's okay. kind of a hard question to answer. Because theoretically, I think a lot of different strategies could be good with black hand tech. Yeah. But it's actually not available to that many strategies. Okay. Well, we'll we'll, uh, we'll go into detail on that subject in part two when we're discussing some decks. Then, um, I'm thinking I'm thinking a little bit about what is the defining the the black hand trait. Is there any relative uh, comparison like Anarch or is it more like a Camarilla and Sabbat? What's the most relative uh, way to do, uh, explain the black hand trait? Is it? Um, Difficult question. One could start by just pointing out that uh, in the point system that do exist as a, re as a reference for creating new vampires, the, a certain capacity vampire gets a certain amount of points, a discipline costs uh, X, Y, or Z amount of points, a uh, justicar title costs another one amount of points, etc., etc., etc. But black hand, the black hand trait in that point system is free of charge. Okay, that's why is that? So, uh, I, why, I don't know. I just, as, as far as I've, I've understood it, that's the case. And that makes one think that it's not meant to be super strong. It meant, it's meant to be uh, a nice addition, oh, more or less. Uh, I think, uh, but I think, just to answer your question on this real quick, yeah. I think the easiest point of comparison is Anarch. Actually, uh, I actually kind of disagree. Um, well, first start, uh, what Isaac said, I think was true. Uh, with the release of the set Black Hand, uh, the term was introduced, and with just the set Black Hand, the Black Hand trait was kind of bad. Uh, with the release of Sword of Cain, on the other hand, the Black Hand trait became a lot stronger. Uh, and at that point, they added multi act for Black Hand. Yeah. And at that point, I think it becomes a lot stronger than Anarchs is. Uh, it might even be on the strength of a discipline in itself. Like, uh, may maybe not dominate, which is a really strong discipline, but... Uh, like Ser Serpentis? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> possibly. So it's like a free of charge extra discipline that some vampires have. Uh, mm. And you might 
if if you just want to compare, you might say that being Seraph is having superior and being Blackhand is having inferior. Yeah. Uh, well, that takes us into our next subject, actually. Um, before we go into any more specifics, the Seraph title, how does it work and why, Adam? Uh, well, uh, there are four or five uh, Seraphs. Uh, four, I think. Four Seraphs per uh, set of Seraphs released. So there are four Group 3 Seraphs, and there are four Group 5 Seraphs. And there are Group 3 and 5, so they can't be added. Uh, yeah. So these four <coughs> times two Seraphs uh, uh, get the option of playing the two most uh, valuable cards that were added in the as I said, in Sword of Cain, which is uh, Tattoo Signal. I can't spell Tattoo, sorry. Tattoo Signal and... Uh, Seraph second, both of which are multi-act. Uh, yeah. I can't even spell Seraph second. Okay. <laughs> okay, I uh, can't find Seraph second. For uh, the record, I would just like to point out that tattoo signal d would make for an awful tattoo. That's just horrible. Go on. <laughs> <laughs> you don't want that on your No, back I don't want it on my body. <laughs> <laughs> my entire back. So I'm sorry, <laughs> let's go on. Uh, so yeah, uh, and Tattoo Signal is a, like a permanent uh, multi-act, uh, which the Seraph can use for another black hand yeah. uh, once each turn. And the Seraph Second is a one-time use multi-act that the Seraph can use for a non-Seraph black hand. Okay. So the Tattoo Signal can be used for anyone else, the Seraph Second can be used only for other non-Seraphs. Uh, and this makes for a, like an interesting mechanic, because two tattoo signals on two seraphs, they can multi act each other. So you get one extra tattoo signal if you have one extra seraph. But if you have one extra seraph, there's another guy who can't use seraph second. So for an ideal spread, you want to have, say, some seraphs and some non seraphs to get as many multi act, as much multi acting as possible. Of course, the tattoo signal is stronger because it's for permanent, uh, but the serve second is uh, is like another untap. You can do three actions or four actions, so it's a good like a transient multi act is good as well. So yeah. uh, with a good crypt and a good uh, crypt draw, you can get a lot of actions if you play with the serves. Yeah, and it's free, which is awesome. Yeah, and also uh, the tattoo signal is actually not, it doesn't require a successful action, and it doesn't even have to be during your turn. It can be used uh, as a block, say in your Predator's turn, after he gets to use the Anarch Troublemaker, for instance, mm. and after he gets to play Misdirection. Mm. So you can use it during his mi uh, as a wake or an untap yeah. during his minion phase to avoid uh, annoying tap monsters, which is uh, kind of neat. Does that have anything on the yeah, I I just want to point out I didn't say that I think Black Hand is is weak. Uh, just I think uh, that it was meant to be weaker trait than say a uh, Prince title or something like that. But anyways, continuing Adam's train of thought, uh, uh, I I agree that you get a lot of uh, untapped. But the limiting factor when it comes to Black Hand is the crypt. So this two Seraph scenario that Adam paints for us is more or less only possible with the group 5 Asmites if you want to have a delivery system as well, i.e. some sort of discipline that actually damage your prey. Okay. Because black hand trait is a... if you make this uh, discipline analogy, it's not a, a throughput discipline, it's a... Uh, delivery system for throughput discipline. So compared to obfuscate or, or fortitude or, or some such discipline. So you need something else that actually damages your prey, lets you get the piece. So you're, you're thinking about loss? Or? Uh, in, in that case, there's a deck of, of one, one, or two, one or two tournaments uh, with, with uh, loss as a delivery system. But that's the only as I see it, it's really strong two Seraph combo. You can force it and just rely on one discipline or something similar, but if you want 
want it neat and good with the multi-act stuff, it's more or less those two Asmite serifs that you have to rely on. Uh, there is a, uh, like one thing that kind of uh, disagrees with uh, your point that I agree, for the most part, it's not a delivery system to have B black hand or B serif, but they do have uh, the equipment card. Yeah, guard the Rubik's. Yeah, which uh, guard the Rubik's. It's a bleed equipment. They can bleed 4 plus 2. Uh, and they can they yeah, it's okay. Uh, and guarded rubrics together with the multi act, you can uh, do the equip dance. You can I get the guarded rubrics, I untap with tattoo signal or with serve second, and then you bleed, and then you get it a new, and then you bleed again, and you get it, and you bleed. Yeah, obviously that's very very strong, but like having that as the only delivery system in a deck is. Uh, is very much living on a prayer, I, I'd say, because you actually do need to go to reboot and you do na need to get it into play before you can actually start delivering damage to your prey. Yeah, uh, of course, it's better to have disciplines uh, in common. Uh, yeah, of course, that's the case. But you could theoretically create a deck with guarded rubrics as the only delivery system, and that's kind of a lot of pool damage for f if you have four minions and you can stealth. Yeah, but you can. Is is that better? Just having relying on guarded rubrics and uh, sharing the equipment between minions, but just putting on equip bleed equipment on all your minions, like a laptop computer. I, I think the the uh, the flaw of such a delivery system would be that you first off you need to get the equipment kind of early on, yeah. uh, and then you need to get it into play, and then you need. It's mostly corner case, but they actually are a card which destroys or steals equipment, so you can't have that against as well. So there are some things that need to uh, get together to make it work. But well also it's, a, it's very, very strong. Having an equipment that lets you bleed for t plus two is incredibly strong. So it's a really great uh, thing of being blackhand. Well, and also, uh, it costs twice the amount of actions than a regular bleed, say if we would loss. It costs twice the amount of actions. Yeah. So that's also something to consider, uh, is that either you're making a multi-act deck, which has lots of multi-act actions, and then you will be clogging on these once you start bleeding with guarded rubrics, or you're making a guarded rubrics power bleed deck, and at that point you're like, you have this huge tech just to multi-act to get <laughs> guarded rubrics. Uh, it's not that of an efficient deck. You don't get to use Tattoo Signal and Seraph Second to their greatest advantage. So, I don't know. Maybe combine Guarded Rubrics with the uh, Leather Jacket and then play Auspex deck. Something like that, possibly. Uh, yeah. But, yeah. But then you need, then it's you more need of an idea than anything I've actually seen or tried myself. Yeah, but then here we have the, like, the basic problem of the Black Can. This idea you present feels ingenious. You have Tattoo Signal, you have Guarded Rubik's, you have uh, either Basal Bath or Leather Jacket to untap and then untap again, but then you have no Seraphs with Superior Auspect and it all falls short. You have the uh, Casimir? Okay. Uh, what? Who? There's Casimir. one. Yeah, 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 okay, yeah. There. okay, there's one. So, but well, doesn't Elimelech have Superior Auspect? Yeah, but they don't group. Yeah, of course, they don't. But yeah, there's... It's possible. Just cool. saying? It's Just possible. saying that it's possible. Okay, so let's move on to other other black hand stuff that's uh, that's neat. I really like the, the black hand ritual. I think that's a strong card. Uh, incredibly strong. They, I just uh, this is one of those unique things with the black hand. The only ones who can reliably go destroy uh, events. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, you recently, or recently, a few years ago, we got that uh, Anarch uh, Demitation card as well, but that's kind of corner case, Anarch Demitation, but this is really nice, backhand yeah. Richard. And I think one of the most important part is, uh, obviously, removing the Gehenna card is the reason why I put it in the deck, but the fact that you can untap a younger backhand vampire makes it... Uh, uh, yeah, fit nicely into the rest of the... Most of the time you can play it, without much cost for something else. So, yeah. okay, I, I untap this guy and this guy does whatever the other guy would have done. Mm. Uh, yeah, so it's kind of easy to cycle it. Yeah, it's sort of burn option-ish. Yeah. So, like, it's the same basic idea. You can basically play the card and 
didn't mess your gameplay up that much. Uh, so, but why is it better than the um, what's it called? The event card that burns other event cards? Because this is not random. Yeah. Okay. Well, for once it's that, and uh, for the other it's uh, this is like this is not how you normally burn it. So, for for instance, if you uh, play an event deck, an unmasking deck, an ally unmasking deck, you might include not to be, to yeah. avoid uncoiling. Yeah. But you're not gonna think about black hand rituals. So this other way of burning events, which people don't normally think about or normally don't play, uh, will make it like kind of impossible to defend against. If someone defends against black hand ritual, <laughs> <laughs> it's but yes, there's a di. Oh, uh, well, sure, yeah, but. You can DI anything, so... No, no, no. Only minion cards. <laughs> 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 uh, of course, there's always possible possibility to counter anything, but... Uh, yeah. The uncoiling is predictable. And it has yeah. to have wait one turn. You play it during discard phase, you can use it during your next minion phase. Yeah. This one you can use immediately. Black hand ritual, you can use immediately. Okay. Uncoiling effects immediately. Yeah, but if you play it during your discard phase... Yeah. You have to wait... No. The other. It destroys doing that discord phase. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it. if I draw it during my minion phase, I can't use it during that minion phase, which I draw it. I have to take an, an entire minion phase with unmasking in play, and then I re remove the unmasking during my discord phase. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I wait, now, now, wait. now I now I follow you. Okay. Yeah. I agree. Uh, yeah, we have touched most of the cards that we were planning to think, uh, to talk about in this first section. Uh, but not one of my other favorite cards, which is Maria Vatagi. <laughs> uh, this one so actually we should talk about, but we can take that after Maria. Yeah. So uh, I've been playing uh, when I started out the game. Uh, I started playing a lot with Maria Vatagi, and I, I think it's an uh, awesome ally, cheap and uh, reliable. I don't know what you guys think. It's 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 cheap. Um yeah, the drawback with the card usually don't affect you. Possibly if you have a lot of these in play and get some one tour price, you can get yeah. really screwed over. Really screwed over. But I, I'm, I don't think I've seen that, actually. No, it's mostly, I think that's an advantage, actually. Because that makes it hard to steal them. People yeah. can't just play yeah, yeah, transplant yeah. and get them themselves. Well, oh, that, yeah, that's awesome as well, of course. Uh... But, but if you put these uh, these allies in the context of it's a non-unique ally which has bleed and can play yeah. stealth. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I think this is a great ally. Uh, so yeah, the only caveat is that it requires black hand. Yeah, of course, and then we're back on the crit situation. But you do have a lot of black hands that have uh, uh, obfuscate, so... I think that's one of the more common disciplines among uh, the black hand, that one yeah. and Auspex really common. But I, I know for a fact, I've, I've tried to build Blood Denial decks inspired <laughs> by you, Anders. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, uh, I think the Blood Denial concept can only be done by Anders, unfortunately. <laughs> uh, and uh, they were decently enough. Have yeah. some, you can get a decent Obfuscate or Spec script to have some bounds and, and these babies and Ocean and Impandulo and the rest of the usual suspects and just pray that you survive long enough to make them all run out of blood. Yeah. And when and when they do, you're the <laughs> king of the world. Trust me. This is, happens once every fifth, sixth game or something, but yeah. then you feel like a god. And you're like, yes, you may act this turn. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. That's the feeling. That's like pure dictatorship feeling in your body. Yeah, and that, then what that happens that when your body, when someone plays Giant's Blood? Or the Coven. The Coven is the... Is the, <laughs> or, the <laughs> or Jake Washington, or just bleed you for six and you're out because you've bought these babies for like <laughs> 10 pool. Yeah. I was supposed to... Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's... It's very, very fun. I think they have... But, yeah, I, I just... Potential is a word I were about to use, but that. All cards have potential. Yeah. Just may have to make the we can make cards that fit really well with this. Yeah. But I, I was just going to say it's, it's cool to include them if you're playing an ally deck and you come across. Okay, my deck has actually some black hand, 
I can include uh, Maria Vathagir too. Because they're, they're cool. Yeah. And they can use Obscate, which is awesome. And they can take a few punches as well, since they have yeah. three life. And you can use, uh, what's it called, uh, when you pick, uh, when you use an, an ally card. Yeah, that leech. You, yeah, you can use leech with them. That's actually really powerful with leech. Yeah. Because normally leech, the case with leech, when you include the leech in another deck, uh, it's, you're like, no, this is going to be blocked, but that's yeah. fine, because it's fine to be blocked. Uh, but with this, you can actually use the untapped from Leech. That's yeah, kind of neat. Yeah, you can use the untapped from Leech, and you can play um, you can play <laughs> obfuscate cards, and you can pick one. You can make two damage with the Mario Tavig, which is uh, maybe well, not also super. Also, you get potas from Leech, yeah. so horseshoes. Yeah, horseshoes. Yeah, 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 yeah. Now you're start trying to see the deck I build. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I actually did that leech thing, it was really awesome. But yeah. it gets really weird after a while, they end up in 4, 5, 6 life. Uh, uh, so they have potential, and they're, they're good fun. <laughs> uh, I'm not gonna say that the potential actually is leech disarm, but <laughs> 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 but they have potential. <laughs> maybe in some other area. Yeah, yeah, maybe. Uh, anywho, I don't know, uh, you said you had one other card, you could take it for the break. We haven't talked about Reunion Camut. Yeah, we have touched the subject, but uh, we can uh, go into some. length about them if you want to. Because so I think this is the, like, the, the trait-defining yeah. card. This is why you play uh, Blackhand. Yeah. Uh, and, well, two counters in your uncontrolled region is, like, their govern. And adding govern to any, dis any uh, sect or any crypt is neat, of course, but the important part with the uh, Reunion Cambit is the fact that you can do it on someone who's older. Yeah. So it has a even higher effect on your Crypt Acceleration than, say, Enchant Kindred, since you have you can start paying them faster, and you can pay more of them. Uh, yeah. Yeah, and, and it fits really well, because most Blackhand Crypts, at least if you try to do, like, a more pure or purish black hand grip, you end up with a lot of five and six caps. Yeah. You follow me? So you really you go around that issue of having everybody at the same capacity. And usually with playing like five or six cap uh, non dominate crypts makes you end up with this awkward amount of pool and or minions. You can end up with three six caps, which isn't that great. You actually want four or five of them. And you, you're down to like 12 pool, it starts to be really awkward, you need to pay one to see one because you have one duplicated in a crypt, blah, blah, blah. and here you, Reunion Camut really fits in nicely. Yeah. yeah, we will see this being utilized more in the next section, which we are going to talk about decks, and it will be awesome, so stay tuned. Uh, this is the end of part one. <laughs>